Hello. A call to action. If we look within ourselves and consider our defeats and failures, we have the opportunity to not only advance ourselves, but advance the work we do with others. This leads me to a story. Last fall, our family took our children up to Orchard Park, New York to watch our favorite football team. That's right, the Buffalo Bills. We love the Bills. They won the game. We were super excited. It was a successful day. It's a picture of my son. <laughs> my son Roger's a big Bills fan, and success emanated from him. It was exhilarating. It was energizing. It was a great afternoon. Failure is a less desirable quality. It doesn't feel as good. Think about it, putting in days, weeks, months of your time into a big project and it not going so well. In this case, a misaligned bridge. Whoops. Not a great feeling. Tough to accept, tough to take in. Yet, if we are willing to embrace failure, if we're willing to take a look at missteps and roadblocks, we give ourselves a tremendous opportunity. Several years ago, Dr. Melanie Stefan did just that. Dr. Melanie Stefan is a lecturer at the Edinburgh Medical School. And she had reflected on some papers that had not been accepted at different schools, schools that she hadn't been accepted in as a professor. And she sat in her office one afternoon, and she wrote what she called a failure resume. A failure resume, think about that for a moment. She reflected on where she's failed, wrote it down, and shared it with her colleagues. And the idea behind a failure resume is to not only think about what hasn't gone right for your life and your career, but it's to share with others and draw them in. So this thought resonated with me. And I sat in my office one afternoon, and I thought about some things that I've struggled with in my career as a school principal. I came up with a couple notes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to all of them this afternoon, but I will focus in on one. I'll keep these notes over here. Several years ago, I became the Salzburg Elementary School principal. And as a brand new principal, I was geeked. I was excited to get in there, wanted to work with our students, our staff, our families, and put in some new ideas. Towards the end of my first year, we really wanted to start integrating more opportunities for our students to not only collaborate and communicate with one another, but also to think creatively and critically. So we held a community forum. And the idea, original thought, was to bring people together, students, staff, community members, and talk about a way to integrate a makerspace into our fifth grade house. So a makerspace accomplishes a lot of those opportunities of critical thinking, of being creative, of promoting collaboration and communication. So we met for a good two hours one afternoon, and we talked through how we could integrate this idea into our school. A lot of great ideas, a lot of great conversations. We appreciated everyone's efforts. At the end of the forum, we landed on having our fifth grade students plant red, white, and violet flowers around the village of Slosburg in lieu of Memorial Day. We really like the idea. But thinking about this for a moment, were we promoting collaboration and communication? Probably. Were we promoting creativity and critical thinking? Not so sure. I had a couple of things, too, during this forum. One, the vision wasn't fully articulated yet. We had people come visit us. And I think I could have done a better job preparing what this idea could look like. We needed more time for our forum partners. And lastly, in deep reflection, by asking our forum to consider a way to integrate a makerspace into our fifth grade house, it blocked more ideas and the potentiality of greater possibilities. So I went into the summer feeling a little bummed. I was excited about the project our fifth graders had completed, but I wanted more for our school and for our students. Chance would have it, the following fall, I was able to visit a local school district about 50 miles from our school. This particular school district has an elementary, a middle school, and a high school on one campus on the Hudson River. The elementary school had held a makerspace for about several years in its school, and it was doing very well. And the principal was willing to have a number of us come over and check out the makerspace. I was pretty excited about this. Because think about all the resources that you have in a makerspace. You know, you have circuitry, you have dash and dot, you have maybe a green screen, maybe, maybe some makey makeys, spheros. And wouldn't you know, when I walked into the makerspace at this campus, this is what I saw. 
You can imagine my shock and puzzlement when I walked into that classroom. And I also said to myself, are you kidding me? I just drove 50 miles for this. The principal could definitely tell I was wondering about what was going on in the classroom. And he said, Joe, there's no resources in our makerspace because we moved all the items into the classrooms. We encourage our staff and our teachers to use these materials on a regular basis through the curriculum. And I said, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense to me. This 50 mile drive was indeed exactly what I needed. So I drove 50 miles back to Salzburg that afternoon, very excited and recognizing that trying to integrate a makerspace into the fifth grade house wasn't the way we should have started it. Had the opportunity to meet with our amazing instructional facilitator, Mrs. Michelle McKiernan, and we had a number of really productive conversations about what we wanted our school to look like and how we wanted our makerspace to run. Rather than trying to fit in, having students collaborate, communicate, think creatively and critically once a year, we found natural and practicable opportunities for our K students, our first grade students, all the way through fifth grade. It made a lot of sense to us. So when we think about it now, our students now have six major opportunities in their time here at Salzburg Elementary School with which to push those 21st century skills. It made a lot of sense to us and we've enjoyed that experience. So that was my story. And I had to live a couple of failures, a couple of obstacles and a couple of missteps in order to make the idea come to life with our team. And what I'd like to do right now is hold a call to action. I'm gonna ask you to think about today's presentations, go home this evening, maybe go to a desk, go to an office or your sofa, think about something that you've struggled with and think about the failures you struggle with and use that as an opportunity to find success. Thank you.